Mic check. This is IC109 in sunny California on the beach today. I really have very little to say. Just want to enjoy this beautiful weather and enjoy life. Usually I know which airplane is flying. I can't tell by the markers, the paint on the uh, the airplane. But usually I can look at an airplane and I can just tell, okay, um, I know the, the design, the brand, the company, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like if I see a United Airlines airplane, I know it exactly. United, American, Delta, Southwest, Emirates, Etihad, Qatar. EVA, Singapore Airlines, ANA, Japan Airlines. Um, what else? Um, there's that one airline that flies to um, Mexico. Is it Volaris? I think it's Volaris. Avianca. Um, you know, all of these uh, airlines and stuff. I've flown on many of those airlines, you know. That's why I know them. Not because I studied or did any uh, research and, and sat at home reading books and stuff. No, I was actually flying, flying those airplanes and I, um, I flew them. So, yeah, that's a little tidbit, a little something, something. That's travel life for you. You get to know the companies. Um, you get to know the, the brands, you get to know the service, the types of airplanes they fly. I can't tell you airplane types. I couldn't do that. Um, I know the difference to like the Airbuses and I think, um, I think the Airbus is, is not a Boeing jet. The Boeing, Boeing has the seven, the seven series, the 700, 747, 777, 737. Yeah. So I'm sitting on the beach and the airplanes are flying overhead. So, of course, that's something that, um, you know, gets grabs my attention. Emirates. Emirates was a great airline to fly. I flew Emirates um, on long hauls, 16-hour flights from Los Angeles to all the way to Dubai. I did that probably like more than four times. Because, yeah, more than four times, right? I flew Etihad from L.A. to uh, Abu Dhabi um, once. Yeah. But at Emirates was the awesome. But after like 12 hours in the air, the Emirates airplane, although it was beautiful when you got on the plane, it was like it was ghetto. It was real hood later on. It was disgusting. I remember like towels, like paper towels just coming out of the bathroom, like flowing out of the out of the uh, trash can in the bathroom. There might have been like seat covers for, you know, toilet when you sit on the commode, seat covers like on the floor. Like it was just disgusting. And it was just, you know, once you boarded the plane, it was beautiful. But 12 hours into a flight, it was like, oh, gosh, I remember that. That was only one time, but perhaps it happens often. I don't know. Um, 16 hour flights are no joke, boy, oh boy. But once you get, get, get through with it, you know, you've accomplished something. You truly accomplished something. And that's, that's, that's pretty cool. 10 hour flights. I think 10 hour flights for me were like nothing because, you know, you could probably sleep like eight hours on the, on the flight, wake up and you've got two hours left and you read a book or something. And then next thing you know, you're landing, you know, it's like, oh, that's nothing. I remember I flew between uh, Los Angeles and South Korea so many times and I don't know, I, it just uh, it became you know easy to me. It was like nothing. I would uh, go to sleep, I'd wake up, I'd read a book. Next thing you know, we were landing and that was just like, wow. So I got my endurance. I built up my endurance for those 10-hour flights. It was nothing. LA to LA to uh Incheon, South Korea, no biggie. Yeah. Yep, yep.
this is a momentous occasion because I don't, I, I've never done this really. We've done this with family, come out to the beach like this in Los Angeles. This is completely different for me. I'm 44 years old and I don't come out to the beach regularly, often enough. Beach life isn't me. Even though Los Angeles is, you know, right here, the coastline is right up here. Matter of fact, I'm thinking maybe I should go to Venice Beach, film over there. Why not? Um, but, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't do this often. I didn't do this often enough. My wife says she did in college. She would just drive to the beach and rest. Do it. She would do exactly what I'm doing right now. Just lay out on the beach and chill. Yeah. She's not with me right now. She's not with me today. She's too busy. She's busy doing some things. I needed to come out and, and enjoy this. This is uh, something I, I don't do. She does it. She knows what I'm doing. She's like. Yeah, I used to do that. Yeah, you're playing catch up. You're playing catch up with me. I'm like, all right, yeah, well, you know. Live and learn. Um, I remember when I was a kid, we came out here. See, it was, it was when we were kids. It was a family thing we did as kids, but it wasn't a part of our life just being, if you're an Angelino, really, how many times do you come to the beach? That's a question for you. How many times do you come here to the beach? Dang. I'm like 0 for 2, right? Two airplanes flew by and I can't I can't tell you which uh, which company they are, which airlines. The the color on that airplane uh is red and white. My guess would be Qantas, but I think it's a kind of a smaller airplane. Hopefully the next one that passes, I'll be able to guess that one. It'll be an easy one, maybe a Delta American or uh, United or something like that. Um, what else? Travel, beaches. Yeah, yeah. When I was a kid, this is when we did this. You know, we went on field trips and, and, and the field trips, you know what? Field trips made it seem like this was, uh, this was like such a grand trip. Wow. We're going to the beach. Like, are you serious? Like we spent so much time inland and there's, it's just a few miles to the beach. This is nothing. This should be a part of your work week. One day at the beach. That should be mandatory. Spend a day at the beach for all Angelinos. Like, look, there's no reason why the beach is, why, you, why, you're, why, why you're so close, while you're so close to the beach, why you are not at the beach once a week. Man. I guess I'm shy. I have a, um, a kayak. Not with me right now, but I own a kayak. I'd like to bring, just carry the kayak down here to the beach and then put it in the water, hop on, and then just like uh, use it right here at the beach. Might not be the easiest to launch where the waves are, to launch the boat, launch the kayak out here, but I would still like to try it. I think I would have to ask the... Uh, the lifeguards first. I have a life vest, so it's like no biggie. But I, I'm I'm shy. I'd be a little embarrassed or what have you if I were to come out here and then if I were to to do that. And I mean, especially if they were if they were to tell me if the lifeguards were to tell me, hey, you can't do that. Oh, I didn't know. You know, same o. In that case, I'd have to claim to be a same oist. You know that story, Samo? All right, Jean-Michel Basquiat, my favorite artist. All right, here we go. We, dang, another airline. I can't, I can't call it. It looks like a sun something. Um, I've seen it. I've. The colors are orange, white, and blue, like my pants. I'm wearing 
these shorts, orange, white, and blue. I've seen the airplane, but I've never flown that airline. So I, I damn it, I can't tell you. I'm 0 for 3 now. Okay. Um, what was I saying? Jean-Michel Basquiat, my favorite artist. All right, Jean-Michel Basquiat and his uh, friend, his school friend, his pal, his best friend, Al Diaz. I interviewed Al Diaz two years ago. Jean-Michel Basquiat and Al Diaz, these young guys created a faux religion, right? It was called Samo. And the idea was, if you believe in Samo, you could do whatever you want in, in life. And then when you got to the pearly gates and St. Peter's asked you, uh, St. Peter's, St. Gabriel, I don't know. St. Peter's at the gate. Asked you, hey, why did you do these things? You weren't supposed to do this in life. If you're a Samoist, all you have to tell St. Peter's is that it, St. Peter's at the pearly gates is, I didn't know. And then you were absolved and then you would be welcomed into, uh, into heaven. That's all you had to do. So, yeah, I'll have to claim, I'll have to claim to be a Samoist. If I bring my kayak out here, the lifeguard is showing up right now. Maybe I can ask the lifeguard. I could definitely ask the lifeguard. Anyhow, I can show up with my, with my uh, kayak. And then if they tell me, hey, you can't, you can't launch here. It's not good. You're, you're going to fall out of the boat. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be terrible for you, whatever, you know. I'll just say, hey, I didn't know, man. I didn't know. Same old. Jean-Michel Basquiat and Al Diaz were like 16 years old when they came up with uh, Same old. They were like, yeah. It was a school project. They went to school at City as School. That was the name of the school. City as School. It was like an experimental, you know, educational system. School. The City city as School. Creative. Kind of reminds me, the, the way, it, the way I, I think of it is probably something like, more like closer to a Montessori type of stuff. Do what you do. Do whatever you do. I hope that's right. I hope that's right. It's just me. That's just me thinking about it and rambling about it. But anyway, yeah, bring my kayak out here, launch it over there. And like 50 feet out, there are no waves, really. It's like no big deal. Like right here near the shore, that's where the waves are. If you get past that, then, you know, it's smooth sailing, basically. Basically. Ideally. Who knows what the practical application of that idea would be? Who knows what would actually happen? I don't think much. I don't think anything would happen, actually. Because it's so... It's not placid. The water isn't like... It's, it's not that calm. But it's also not that uh, rough. You know? And most days are pretty much like this. You have to get the timing right. Your timing has to be right. Because what you do then... Is if your timing is wrong and that wave comes in as you're trying to go out, oh man, you're screwed. Yep. All right. That's enough of me rambling for now. <laughs>